Welcome back to Oracle of Seasons. Today we're going to be taking on the Unicorn's Cave, which is surprisingly not very far from where I am, so even though I'm doing some exploration first, we're going to be getting to it pretty quickly. Two dungeons in a row. But now that I've got all of the seasons in the Rod of Seasons, I can change this area to Spring, the Spool Swamp, and get that heart piece we saw. And boy, do you need it! <laughs> The only problem, there are a bunch of currents. So gotta really pull down, there we go. So one of the things about spring is that all of the melting snow creates torrents, so where there's water you get currents. Uh -huh. In some places. And then I saw that cave. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I like how you saw the eyes, just swing the sword wildly. Is there a quick and easy way to kill those guys? Uh, no, just stronger weapon. Maybe Dimitri. Yeah, he could eat him. He can eat anything. Oh, yes! Nice. Bet you're thrilled, it says. This game knows me so well. Ah, oh, that was well-timed. Now, one of the things I'm going to do first, we got that treasure map. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of those gems we need to get in the Tarm Ruins, because once we've done Unicorn's Cave, that'll be our next dungeon. Doesn't hurt to get an early jump on treasure hunting. For some reason, it didn't feel like I should be able to get into the water there, but you're given one square. It's the beach. The first couple yards are waitable. No, I'm not sure how to activate this. I actually just need a mystery seed. And what's the Black Beast? It's just this thing. Prepare for a tough fight! So hard. Such a strange shape for a jewel. Pretty sure all the jewels together make the PlayStation control buttons. Just about. What, are there an X, a square, a circle, and a triangle, right? I think so. Yeah, so, yeah. That's the first subrosion portal we used. And then, guess what? There's the next dungeon. Bunch of unicorns buried there. Or the unicorns buried everyone else. Hey look, our buddies are back. The most obvious gaseous spot in the game. We already saw the funny stuff at the end of Oracle of Ages. Come on, they're, they're even giving you mystery seeds when you kill them. That's what I was talking about earlier. For some reason, it doesn't let you pick up another mushroom until the first one's disappeared. Uh, speaking of awesome music, Unicorn Cave is some pretty good music. Good marching music. Now we need to come here when it's summer so that this water is receded. Oh, look at all these enemies who posed no threat. Where did they go when this is flooded? Hey. Nice. I like the lips on that statue. Now here, directly north of Horon Village, I've set it to summer because there's actually a few things you can find with the water receded actually getting there that I'm not quite sure of at first. Yeah, it's a little confusing. The stuff to the side here, you basically need to go where you're going to get to Eyeglass Lake. But first I want to come here. There's a secret golden old man. He tasks us with a side quest. So far you're useless. <laughs> so at four specific points in the game, and only in a specific season for each of them, there's going to be a golden-type monster. It's exactly the same as any other monster of that type we've seen, it just has a crap ton of health. Yeah, they redid this again in Minish Cap. 
Is it essentially the same thing, or is it a little more adapted or expanded? It's the same thing, it's just there's not only four. There were a bunch of kinstone fusions that made gold beasts appear. And you could kill them for sweet rewards. For these guys, it helps to back them up into a corner and then just wail on them. Yeah, they've got hit points that rival bosses. One rupee, great reward. <laughs> Hooray. And the next one, um, that Octorok, it needed to be spring in order to get. Can't get there yet. Next, dude, this is in front of the second dungeon, isn't it? Uh, yes. That's the part you come out of the top. And in fall, there's a golden moblin. I quit it, please. He's, try he's trying to run away. And that's the only two we can get right now. The last two we're going to be getting as we go through the next two dungeons. Oh, not this place again. <laughs> Don't worry, we're only here briefly. Another one of the jewels is hidden in this oddly indiscreet little square of water you can dive down into. We actually saw this pretty early on, this little area. But oh no, this is what happens in the Lynx game. <laughs> this isn't the same guy whose ass we kicked in ages. It's like his cousin, I guess. That was my brother-in-law. He's a dick. So in a Lynx game, we need to get it from there. Yeah. Have fun getting it now. By doing the same thing we did to come down here. Oh no, that was difficult. I had to waste a whole other seed. He made you go through Sunken City again, which is a problem. Yeah. And so once we're done with Unicorn Cave, we'll be able to get the last gem from that old man. Hooray, water. Yeah, there's slightly more water, but not much. So, from my memory, and also from watching this again with you doing it, I feel like the dungeon design of Ages seems to be a lot better. Just in the way they're laid out. Because a lot of the dungeons in this game, especially these middle sophomore dungeons, feel very just kind of going through the motions. Possibly. Can't burn me! Well, I have an idea what the dungeon item's gonna be. Yeah, obviously it's the ball and chain. We can only wish. Please, Nintendo, give me that. In a 2D game. I just want a ball and chain that takes over a quarter of the screen and just swings around and kills <laughs> everything. Don't activate that switch yet. There, and now you never need to come back to that room. Yeah, if you absentmindedly hit that switch, there's not really a reason to go back through there, so you can very easily find yourself missing a key and wondering where the hell it is. One kind of interesting thing from the very first Zelda that they never touched on again was your ability to bring all keys into every dungeon and just have a surplus. Right, you could run through part of a dungeon, grab some keys, and then take them to another part, or another dungeon entirely. I had the most inexplicable trouble with this one damn jumping puzzle. All Ganon needs to make is a room like that. His whole castle. Don't worry about that bottom path, you need to go to the top path to get the dungeon item. Bubbles. 
that the first sighting of bubbles in this game, I think. They're about as much of a problem in this game as they were in Ages. Which is not much. Yeah. If they hit you, you can't use your sword for like 10 seconds. Which, now that you have the slingshot, isn't much of a problem. Not really. And our dungeon item, the magnetic gloves. I do like this mechanic. We were talking in between recordings. Both of these games sort of replaced the hook shot with something different. Aegis had the switch hook. In this... What? This has multiple utilities. Huh? In this, this has multiple utilities. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Every time you press the button, the magnetic glove switches polarity, and that does a couple of things. There are magnetic balls that you can grab and use them as weapons. They pretty much instant kill everything, and you do use them to hold down switches. There are also blocks on the wall, blocks on the ground, that you use the gloves to grab onto and fly across gaps. It is a pretty cool mechanic, I do like it, but yes, the high-pitched whine that happens every time you use it is quite annoying. And I do like that every time you press the button, it switches polarity, so there is some strategy to using it. Yeah, there's a couple puzzles later for that. One cool feature is you can use it to bring iron knuckles closer to you. If that's something you want to do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why would you want that? And now we take the downward path. You might be surprised at what I decide to do in this path. Because in the screen immediately to the left, there are Bowser head statues. And they shoot fireballs. But hey, I've got a shield. Yeah. I'm going to actually use it. That's... Wow. I can't believe it. Common sense. Who'd have thought? I don't think I've ever done that. This is kind of cool. The statue you can push directly mirrors the one in the other room. You need to guide it around a block on the ground to get to the switch. <laughs> that crap. He had his revenge. I'm taking you with me! Alright, Andros. That ball is blocking a shortcut to the first part of the dungeon. Hey. Why are you not killing all the keys with the magnetic ball? Just so you know, while that thing is in motion, it kills pretty much everything it runs into. Yep. And it's the other way to get rid of the hip loops masks. I almost thought you forgot that name. It took me a second. I had to remember the point where I was thinking how ridiculous it was. Now this is a little more intimidating than it is difficult. If you use the Rock's Feather, you can jump and pretty much keep on the path. Oh dear. In fact, you can cut it quite close like I do. But it's just a compass. Not worth it. One thing I do like with these little gels is when you use a spin attack, or when you've upgraded the sword to level 2, it kills them instantly. It doesn't make the two smaller bits. Gives you a sense of progression. So yeah, if a ball or a switch has N and your glove has S, they'll be attracted to each other because that's how magnets work. And if they're the same, they repel, no matter how far away they are in the room. Insert insane clown posse joke here. Never. So yeah, this is better than the switch hook, I think. I like it better than the switch hook. 
I don't know why. I just think it's cooler. It has more uses, I guess. The noise is a huge drawback, but honestly, it's not enough to kill it for me. Nah, I think I like it a little more than a switch up, too. There's a lot more crazy shit you do with it later, too. Because every time you press the button, you do switch polarity, even when you're floating above an infinite void. Keep that in mind. And there's another case where the minecart didn't come back, so I had to reset the dungeon. Who said time travel wasn't in this game? Oh no! I know we saw it earlier, but I like how this game gives you a dialogue if you try to open a box from the side. And then in future games, they just were like, ah, fuck it, and they let you kick it over from the side. Which is so much more fun. No, probably this one, more than any other mini-boss, is a pure combat fight. At least from what I can tell. Yeah, there's nothing puzzling about it. You just hit it in the tail and dodge it. The only puzzle is figuring out how not to get killed while you're trying to wait at where it's going to stop spinning around so you can't hit it because it goes back into its ball form very quickly. Garfield, no. You're given surprisingly little time to attack it. If you sit and watch it for a while, it does have a pattern. It has a few of them. It's just a matter of trying to figure out which one it's going to use. A tiger is surprisingly adept at patterns. It's a little weird. Not as weird as it's spinning around like a blade, but... This room, <laughs> that looks like hell. Oh my god. I need to approach it from the door to the right, though, because there's another magnetic ball, but you can't reach it from there. Damn it. Totally missed the button. At least this is the button you only need to press once. Good aim. Yeah, this beam most is having a little bit of a trouble. Oh, these things. These guys are annoying. You can use the magnetic gloves to bring them closer to you, even though they do resist you. But really, when they spin around and shoot out a fireball, they just kind of sit there for a while, and then that's the best point to attack them. I hate these things. They're pretty annoying. They don't turn up too often, at least. Yeah, it, I think the thing I hate the most is they actively try to avoid you, which just makes fighting them tedious. Luckily, the ball stays where you left it. Yeah, I do like that. It's kind of like that ball in Eagle's Tower from Link's Awakening carry through the whole dungeon, though. And here's what I was talking about. Mid-air polarity. And that's an easy one. Yeah. Later on, you have to jump from spinner to spinner. That gets interesting. You don't want to rush it either. You need to wait until your sprite is lined up properly. Oh, no. oh, no, I knew it. I mean, this is a really strong magnet. 
<laughs> yeah. It's propelling your body weight from an infinite distance across a room. That's like weapons grade magnet. That's not the right place. I need to get a key first, because that room leads up to the boss. What you got from me? Now, I feel like I saw that advice, but during my practice run, I did not process it at all. It's a room full of armos, and the order in which you kill them is the order in which you need to open some chests that appear once they're all gone. Yeah, so the best thing to do is not run around and activate all of them at once, because that just makes it impossible. Now, this I'm just doing to show off. But if you open the wrong chest, they all turn into anti-fairies. You almost died to show us this information. And he damn well better appreciate it. There we go. It's just some random shit in the chest, too. So now, we need to use this ball to protect us from the fireballs. And that's how we're gonna get to the boss key. Platforming. Oh no! Oh god. That's one way to do it. Oh. That's probably easier. I do have some slight trouble with these conveyor belt platforms. Well, they do throw a little bit of a wrench in the conventional platforming. I mean, these Zelda games have a bare minimum of it. Now, the thing with that ball, it's much more useful to be holding it next to you than to push it up against the wall. Somehow not as effective. Tricky. Be careful. You want that one set to end. Are you ready to fight a magnet boss? This dude's interesting. You'd think you'd be able to attack his eye. But no, you need to actually pull down this big spiky ball. And try desperately to pull it or push it towards the boss. Pushing is generally better because it doesn't pull the giant spiky ball right at you, but, you know. I find neither hugely effective. The hardest part about this fight is that the room's pretty large, so you can easily lose the boss trying to avoid killing yourself. And also, you're not able to do much with the angles. Once you've hit it a few times, it's going to split into little ones. You need to kill all of them before they reform into the boss. I managed to get it down to just one, so... You can actually smash them with the ball. It kills them in one hit. Of course it does. It's not the most reliable way to fight a boss, I've found. Yeah, it's actually kind of annoying, but, you know. At least they tried something different. Yeah. This being me, I do injure myself more than the boss does. I think, actually, that's anybody doing this fight. <laughs> it does work to get him in a corner. Squish sprite is just funny. You got a forest fire. Only you. 
Magatree messages you. No, don't give that to me! Ah! <laughs> you fool! strength, but also singed all my leaves off. Ugh. Another linked game cutscene. You did not earn that. Yeah. So, Varen's flame lit after the entire game was over. Anox's flame lights about halfway through, because I guess he's better at being a bad guy? I don't know. Even though he's done nothing, there's no story. We haven't checked in with him in a while. He barely exists in his own game. He's still just sitting in the room staring at the crystal with Din in it. Man, I did a great job with that. And it continued waiting after your arrival. Now you earned this. Oh, cool. Nothing in this hand. Nothing in this hand. Slayer. I'm a murder machine. It doesn't do anything. Whoa, look how big he's gotten. Uh, maybe you should see a doctor. Got a massive neck sore there. Or whatever they call a tree doctor. Arbalist? No, that's a... <laughs> that's something else entirely. Arborist. There you go. Do I? No, I don't. N N the, the secret is... The secret is sharp. So if you've forgotten any of the secrets you learned through the game, you can come here and read them. Something tells me we don't want to know Tingle's secret. <laughs> the secret is, I'm not a fairy. <laughs> the secret is I flunked out of community college but haven't told anyone. So just like the tree in the other game, this guy's got parts of him that open up as you beat the game. Just places to refill your stocks. But next time we'll be taking on the Tarm Ruins, and then immediately after, the Ancient Ruins, which is actually the dungeon. PlayStation.